Taking a live look at the U.S. Capitol right now, the dust settling from the State of the Union from President Joe Biden last night. A lot of people watched as President Biden gave his address to his biggest audience this election year. And a new CNN poll is showing of those watching, more than 6 in 10 had a positive reaction. Joining us to discuss is political analyst Tom Serafin. Hi, Tom. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Great to be with you. Okay, so there was a lot of people saying that his delivery was going to be the most important thing, more so than the substance because of his age, of course. Did he deliver? He had to deliver the goods, but to do that, you need the right vehicle. Last night, he did it gas-free. Uh, he exceeded expectations there, so that's why some of his punches landed, and that's why you see that CNN poll today. Okay, so let's talk about this. He brought up the elephant in the room, which, of course, was his age. Let's listen about one of the things he had to say about that. My fellow Americans, the issue facing our nation isn't how old we are, it's how old are our ideas. Hate, anger, revenge, retribution are the oldest of ideas. But you can't lead America with ancient ideas and only take us back. You lead America, the land of possibilities, you need a vision for the future and what can and should be done. So he was making fun of himself, and he did get a few laughs out of the, the age comment earlier. Um, it was important for him to address that, wasn't it? It was, and I thought he did it the right way. Rather than denying the age thing, the way the press secretary and others in the administration have done for three years, lean into it. It's because I've been around so long that I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is how we should avoid it. It's because I am senior. I know these people. It's good to have somebody with some age, uh, some maturity in the room, mm -hmm. and we can bring people together. He has to do that. That takes that issue off the table as long as he doesn't do anything publicly that's going to embarrass himself. That has happened, though, in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about this because this seemed to be more of a political campaign speech. He didn't name Donald Trump. But he kept referring to him as his predecessor, linking yeah. him to Putin at one point. Uh, but we're, here's one comment that he made about January 6th. Let's listen to this one. My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. I will not do that. This is the moment to speak the truth and to bury the lies. Here's the simple truth. You can't love your country only when you win. Now, the reaction um, from last night uh, from a lot of Republicans uh, has been that this was too much about his predecessor and not enough about what he plans to do. What's your reaction to that? Well, uh, their, their, their consideration and their, their response is, you know, what you would expect in a political community. This used to be the State of the Union. And, you know, President Biden is not the first one to go political, but he's probably the first one to go full body a political on this particular issue. But you have to take a look at his playing field. It's very narrow. And he's coming out of a couple of weeks of primaries where you had thousands and thousands of people, over 100,000 in Michigan. You had 19 percent of the people in Minnesota, in 13 percent in North Carolina, 8 percent in Colorado. These people voted uncommitted or no preference in the Democratic primary. They're more to the left. He, this speech was all about going to the left. Even when he talked about the problem in Israel with Hamas mm -hmm. and the citizens and the terrorists hiding amongst themselves, he said, we, have to, we, we can't be killing any more citizens. And then early on in the speech, he talked about Ukraine and the need to arm them. So take a look at the political playing field that he went into. Most experts will say that it's statistically tied in the Electoral College, give or take 10 points. Some have Biden at 241, 245, and some have Trump at 251, 247. So that's tied. 46 electoral votes are up, and that's the toss-up. In Wisconsin, it's going to be all about abortion. Pennsylvania is the other key state. That's all about the Rust Belt issue. In Michigan, it's about Israel and jobs. In Arizona, it's about immigration. And in Georgia, it's all about the voting irregularities. Those are the key playgrounds. So that's what they're fighting for right now. So he's got to get those people back into his column. This is what he's got, though. He's got a great speech last night, and he's got $80 million. Trump's got $39 million. You can expect a lot of ads out of this speech last night okay. appealing to the left, because when he comes to Chicago, mm -hmm. today his approval ratings are at 39%. When he comes to Chicago, he's got 
got to have that up in the in the 40s. Okay, so the let, 40s, the official, got to have that. let the official let the official campaign it. season begin. It started officially last night. Tom Serafin, always a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you soon. We'll Good be right to talk back. To you. you too. God bless.